Yo, 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 what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on? What is good? Welcome back. Welcome back to the New York Live. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well today. It has been that gloomy feeling across the board. Markets are getting ready to be fully open. We've got the New York futures markets opening at half past two UK time in the next 25 minutes, guys. So what was I going to say? Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> man, i got to get back into the swing of things, man. I ain't been doing enough lives. I need to bring it back to those three, four-hour lives where we start breaking Bitcoin down, waiting for the Hong Kong session. You know how it is back in the day, ladies and gentlemen. Mad love to all my day ones back in the day. Pattern watchers where you are at. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get with the flavor. Today, we are going to be having a conversation about a few things. Traders are concerned. So... Without further ado, let's have a conversation, guys. Okay, okay, okay. So let's roll with the flavor today. I hope everyone is doing well. Firstly, what we need to do is we need to go into Bitcoin and understand what is happening in the chart with Bitcoin. So zoom out. You know what the story is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's zoom out and understand what Bitcoin has been up to. Let's kill off all these zones, get rid of everything. We're starting afresh. So right now, the structure is this structure here is nice W formation. OK, remember what we said in the video on the Sunday. What's the first thing you want to be doing? You want to be drawing off this structure right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is your weekly structure. Where are we in relation to the structure? Seems as though that we are here. Okay. Now, what we've got to be aware of, ladies and gentlemen, is this. As much as we want this to be the structure and Bitcoin to form a W formation and then shift out, this is a psychological pattern, guys. It's designed to trap traders to the belief it's going to the downside, shake them out, hit their liquidations and rip price to the downside one more time to get them committed into the shorts to only reverse it back up one more time and continue with its move to start recovering the previous vectors inside of these zones. You want an example of this kind of structure? Well, here it is on the bigger time frame, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen take bitcoin all the way from the top that happened over here and then you have yourself m formation let's start it off always do this at the start of your day ladies and gentlemen drop level one drop level two drop level three peak formation there's an extension on the level three they drop down even lower but what we need to understand is what is actually leading bitcoin's move to the downside more importantly we have ourselves a little bit of a concerning issue, ladies and gentlemen, that not really many are talking about it in the crypto space. Those who are, they ain't getting the credit for it. OK, the yields are inverted. That's a problem. When the yields start to invert, it tells you that there is likely going to be a recession. Are we already in a recession? What's the story? You see, the bond market does give some cause for concern because as the yield inverts itself, we see it as a sign of a recession. OK, so the 10 year Treasury note has decreased 11 basis points. All right. And then the two year yield itself dropped five basis points down to three point zero six eight percent. All right. Now, what you've got to understand is when the yields themselves are increasing, you expect them to pull back. But the bigger thing that we need to be aware of, ladies and gentlemen, is what is going to be happening with the CPI data that's coming out tomorrow. So if you are on your phones and it's pretty dark for you, please, please reduce the brightness of your screens because I'm going to switch over the chart and it's going to get kind of bright. Here we go. So. On Wednesday, half past one, before the market opens, so the pre-markets of New York, they're going to be releasing the CPI data. They are projecting an increase overall of 8.8%, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Economists are seeing an 8.8% jump on the annual basis and 1.1% increase from the previous month. Okay? Now, if it goes to 8.8% on the CPI itself, that would be an 8.6% surge in prices. Do you understand what that means? On top of that, if the Fed is going to actually increase the interest rates, we're going to have ourselves a problem with credit, ladies and gentlemen. People are going to find it even harder to pay for things. Those people who are in mortgages, renting vehicles, whatever, companies borrowing money from other companies to service their businesses, that interest is going to increase. Now, what we want to see is we want to see oil dropping down lower. 
But the problem with oil dropping down is the idea of the dominance of the dollar. Dollar index is shooting up. We've got euro close to parity. They narrowly touched the parity zone. And they're trying to come back up. Remember what we said in last night's video, Bitcoin's problem with the euro. As long as the euro is dropping, that would make up 56% of the dollar index. It tells you that traders are running to dollar. They want that safety. Now, the dollar is appreciating nearly 8%, ladies and gentlemen. That is crazy. Bad news for trade for the dollar itself. And this is what Trump was trying to do. He was trying to get the dollar all the way down so it works out better for trade. But traders are scared. Traders are concerned. Now, in relation to Bitcoin itself, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin has shown this behavior to go against the narrative. This move to the upside was welcomed with a retrace all the way down from the start of this weekend, gone all the way down to Monday. Now, is Monday or has Monday been the false move? Because when we see Bitcoin forming a pattern like this, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that we want to see once they break out of the zone is the retrace. Remember, the W structure is a place where they build positions. Once they break out of the peak of the W, a retrace is welcomed. It's this retrace right here, which is where Bitcoin is right now, where Bitcoin needs to hold true. If Bitcoin is going to come back up, ladies and gentlemen, this is the only point that Bitcoin can make it from. Now, not to say that it can't go up, but let's make the assumption that Bitcoin does go down lower. If Bitcoin violates the 17,615 zone itself, then that would be an invalidation of this structure right here. That means it would need to trade lower than 17,615. If it trades lower than this point and doesn't try and come back up into the range and spends more time inside of this zone right here, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin is tipped to continue its move down lower and start taking back those beautiful green vector candles that reside on the left of the chart, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see right here. There it is. This is our zone. So best thing for you guys is when you're considering trying to go long or you're doing some DCA with Bitcoin, please mark off the vector candles in the chart so you are not taken by surprise. That's the most important thing. If you're not taken by surprise, then you're not going to be aware whether you need to close a trade or not. This is the next zone of liquidity that Bitcoin could actually make its way towards if the whole narrative of recession, inflation still starts to put pressure on traders across the board. OK, we know Bitcoin likes to follow the S&P. So we go into the S&P futures themselves and on the daily, it looks like, sorry, on the daily itself, they're trading lower. S&P is forming the same structure nearly testing that 800 EMA, bounced away from it. Now it's coming down, but the pressure is on stocks, ladies and gentlemen. From last night's video, we were understanding that the volatility index of the put-call ratio amongst traders who are favoring shorts or longs, um, sorry, puts or calls in the actual S&P itself is showing that there is a lot more puts coming into the zone, okay? People are favoring lower prices. That's where people's heads are at, okay? Now, Let's look into some on-chain analytics with Bitcoin just before the market's actually open. We've got another 20 more minutes until that happens. I hope everyone is doing well. Mad love and respect. If you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you are seeing because we're going to bring some madness in the chart very shortly when we start talking about the orders that are pending on Bitcoin. And it looks like we've got an influx of liquidity coming into that 20,100. But we ain't going to be talking about that yet, ladies and gentlemen. We ain't going to be speeding it up for nothing. We need to mellow out. We need to prepare ourselves and be aware of what we are trading into okay so let's go over to our good old capitulation chart how many of you believe that bitcoin is at the point of capitulation or there's still more room for capitulation to happen okay please let me know in the comments happy days and if you haven't done so already guys make sure you're sharing the live man spread the pattern watchers spread the love for the pattern watchers ladies and gentlemen we're here to try and make sense of mr market makers manipulation so here is the capitulation chart for Bitcoin. Not necessarily the capitulation, but it's the net unrealized profit and losses of Bitcoin in those who are holding Bitcoin. Now, it doesn't tell you whether the holders themselves are the guys from when Bitcoin was a dollar. It could be the guys from holding Bitcoin at 60,000, 40,000, 10,000, 300, 200. But the narrative says on this key down here that when the line is pink, it's telling you that we are at a point of capitulation. If we zoom out and understand Bitcoin's capitulation points over time, we can see that they spend quite a bit of time in capitulation because people are waiting for the idea that Bitcoin's going to turn back up and they're going to make a return on their investment at some point. But unfortunately, the state of capitulation is, is when someone gives up and says, that's it, no chance I'm going to make my money back 
I need to close up my losses and get out of the game. That's what capitulation is. But if you pull up the actual capitulation chart itself, you'll see that for every low point in the chart where capitulation is present, that is when the market turns. That's the most important thing. Milad, mad love and respect to you, bro. Thank you very much for that, man. I owe you a drink, man. Please don't do that, but thank you so much. So what we're looking for is, you can see the stages. Once capitulation forms, we then see the pink line start turning into orange. That would mean that traders are feeling hopeful. If traders are starting to feel hopeful about Bitcoin, then we would naturally anticipate Bitcoin optimism to rise. But the optimism has to come from the marketplace first. We have to understand when the risk is on or when the risk is off. If the risk is off, they're going to be running their liquidity all the way over to the government T-note futures. They're going to be scared. They want safety. OK, we're not really seeing that safety in assets across the board, ladies and gentlemen. You can see gold is dropping lower, but that's only because it's dropping against the value of the dollar. So where's the safety, ladies and gentlemen? T notes. That's where it is. Look at the notes rising up on the daily chart. They are starting to put their money into the government because they are scared on what is going to be the outcome of the Fed. What pressure will the Fed put in relation to the interest rate increases? Is it going to be 50 basis points? Is it going to be 75 basis points? We don't know, ladies and gentlemen, until they have the meeting on Wednesday before the markets open. OK, they're already pricing it in. News is putting it out that there could be an increase in up to 75 basis points. And the idea is now with the parity of the euro itself, that's going to be putting more pressure on the euro, more pressure on trade. And it's just all going to come to, as someone put it, it's going to put go to the pan, ladies and gentlemen. But it's always at these points when the market turns. What you've got to understand, guys, is this. When things are dropping down, you have to understand the cycles. The cycles are very important. When I say cycles, I'm not talking price action. I'm talking cycles of human behavior because human nature doesn't change. That's the truth. If you've been economically expanding from, here we go, look, the S&P and, the, and the, the economy of the US, right? From January the 3rd, 2019 has been economically expanding all the way up until February 20, which was the dot-com boom. OK, well, they've been making money for all that time, nearly two years. They need to make something back. So they take back their positions. They take out all the liquidity because that is when everyone was so pumped about the markets. They made them pay the price. During them paying the price, they were also picking up the same assets. The aggressive move to the downside led to yet another phenomenal economical expansion from March 20 all the way up to March. Sorry, January 2022. Another two year cycle shifting out of the zone, picking up assets and making that money, borrowing money and then of course the result is we've got inflation we've got recession we've got war and now we are in exactly the same spot that we were only four years ago nearly okay it's human nature ladies and gentlemen it ain't changing subprime mortgage crisis 2007 2008 you know what the deal is inflation all right senate was printing off 700 billion dollars to set for a rescue plan Lehman brothers needed bailing out but they've ended up bankrupt we had war going off at that point as well so guys, tell me what's different. Nothing's different. It's just cyclical behavior in terms of human nature. So how can we use that information to try and exploit the charts? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the problem that we've got with trading is this, okay? You are always going to be welcomed into trading with the idea of leverage. Leverage is always going to be great. It sucks you into the game where you don't need that much money to make a bit of money. But the problem is leverage is a double-edged sword. You have to understand how to use leverage. The idea of trading is to stay in the game of trading, not get in as soon as you can and get out as soon as you can. That's not what it is. Okay? We're not talking about going to a bar, ladies and gentlemen, trying to get some fun and then leave for the day and go back to bed. No, we're talking about staying in the game. We want to play the game as often as we can. And the only way we can stay in the game is if we improve our chances or increase our chances by not going for the money. Forget the money. Focus on the execution because the execution is what's going to keep you in the game. What are you here for, ladies and gentlemen? You're obviously coming into the game of trading to make money. So my idea for you is this. Try and not make money whilst making money. Focus not on making money, but on the execution because the execution is going to lead to the money coming to you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Now, any move in Bitcoin, back up, okay? may be led with a move back down. So please, if you're considering taking trades on Bitcoin, because you can see, ladies and gentlemen, last week, Bitcoin did a number on us and everyone started coming out. Bitcoin to the moon, baby. Moon boy engaged. Like, what's going on? 
but we didn't take that 800 EMA. That 800 EMA is still a problem, man. Unless Bitcoin gets above that 800 EMA, the mindset of the markets, okay, is still going to be favoring lower prices, okay? This pump right here has let Bitcoin move to the downside. Cool. If we actually look at the charts quite closely, we'll understand that Bitcoin during the weekend has rejected the psychological low. Now, we do have news announcements coming out, which could imply that Bitcoin is likely to go even further. So from now until tomorrow, price action might actually slow down. OK, it might actually slow down. So please, if you are in trades that you're in profit in, pay yourselves. Of course, if you're taking longer term trades, it's a different story. Start scaling out, start paying yourselves because the volatility is going to be present tomorrow. It's all dollar based, ladies and gentlemen. So please be cautious with your trading. OK. Please be cautious with it. Now, what time is it? 20 past Two, 10 more minutes until the start of the New York session. Futures markets, they are tipped to see. Let's see where we are right now. So going across the board, ladies and gentlemen, we can see. So where's the money going? As you can see on this chart right here, the dominance is in the dollar. Any asset against the US dollar is struggling right now. Year on year, euro is down 14%. GBP USD down 14%. Aussie, Aussie dollar down 10% nearly. And Kiwi dollar is now 11% down. And look at that. Oz, dollar yen all the way up to 23.56%. A word of warning about dollar yen, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people have been trying to catch this, this, um, this move and they're waiting for dollar yen to drop. For every aggressive move that happens in dollar yen to the downside will be welcomed with a move back up. The CPI data that comes out tomorrow is going to be the dictating factor as to whether or not Japan is going to do anything about the idea that the yen's rapid weakening is going to be a problem. But... Patrons of the channel understand what this really means in the terms of understanding the carry trade, okay? You want low interest assets so that you can go and seek higher yielding assets. You know what the story is. This is a bluff. They've been smacking this yen for a long time. They've been Will Smithing the yen for a long time purposely because you think the guys in Japan are going to be investing in the US? Of course they are. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, we've got 1,500 of you in the room and there's only 302 of you that have only Will Smith the like button. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new, be sure to like the Will Smith button. Let me reverse that. Be sure to Will Smith the like button. Man, this guy is on fire today. I am on fire with my speech going backwards. I am anticipating this move right now in the futures markets. 22 minutes past two. We're getting ready for another eight more minutes until the market. So let's just roll over to stocks. What are stocks saying? Okay, we got a lot of blood across the street, across all the indexes across the board. Quite frankly, the GB100 itself, FTSE 100, He's, he's only up very narrowly, about 0.68% for the year. Okay, so weekly it's up 2%, but now it's trading down lower. We've got the US indexes themselves, which are trading. Monthly, they're up for the month. Weekly, they're sort of struggling, but year on year, they are down quite a bit. Now you can understand why they are saying that the markets are probably still tipped to drop down lower. Because year on year, they're only down 11%. NASDAQ is down 19%, which is going to set up the narrative as to where we are likely to see Bitcoin ending up. Up, okay remember there is liquidity down below for them to take bitcoin they have to move it up in order for them to move it lower now with that being said ladies and gentlemen let's start breaking down the book map and understand exactly where the orders are so we can make sense of the u.s brink session remember what we said about the u.s brinks in the new york session the first hour and a half is always going to dictate what the rest of the session is going to look like we like to mark off this is the range of the New York session. This is a structure. If the Brinks box forms down here, ladies and gentlemen, and they are expecting a bit of a recovery in the zone, we would anticipate stop hunts to appear inside of this area for price to start making a way out of the range. Asia has been marking price down to the downside. Principle would say that we would be anticipating price to come into this zone and test the narrative of price coming into the moving averages. They can only keep it away from the mean for so long, ladies and gentlemen. On high time frames, it's going to take longer for it to come back. Smaller time frames, it's going to take less amount of time for it to come back towards it, which is going to tell you that the more you see it coming back to a moving average and moving away from it tells you that the momentum to the downside is still favorable.
It's when they spend a lot more time at the lows and the moving average comes close to price when you have this compression. So then you'll be expecting volatility to come in. A contraction of the moving averages is going to tell you that. There are a lot of guys right now running shorts on the idea that the golden cross has happened on the one hour time frame. So people's mindsets is the golden, uh, sorry, the death cross has happened. So that means now we are waiting for price to drop down. Well, those guys are going to get tested with price and it's going to end up moving back up, back up, back up to the point where they experience the pain. They close off their trades. They decide to go long. They've dismissed the idea of the actual death cross itself and then price reverses versus from that and then it traps them one more time. If there's something you take away from this stream, ladies and gentlemen, it's this. The game is designed for traps. They don't care about your opinion of the economy or anything. Market Maker's goal is to make sure that you as the buyer get your orders filled with orders that are set up against you so that when you are in a profit, the liquidity is present. When you are in a loss, your liquidity is there for the taking by Mr. Market Maker, aka Steve. So let's get into the book map, ladies and gentlemen, and understand exactly what we're going to see from Bitcoin very shortly. So I bring up the 15 minute time frame how long we got ladies and gentlemen 25 minutes past we're starting to see some movement right now let's get up the book map and let's see what the fire is here we go let's open the book map the book map itself if you are new is the order book for bitcoin in binance right now these are orders that limit orders that are being placed OK, to the upside of the chart, you can see that these orders on the right side are orders that are pending to be taken, which will be understood as the sell orders. Down here would be the limit buy orders. What our goal is as traders is to try and understand the relationship of the commitment that was present in the chart against the commitment that is coming into the chart. You see, over here are orders that have been cancelled. Now, if these orders have been cancelled, the idea is if price is going to go towards those zones again, are they going to trigger the same interest? Likewise, down here, we can see if I move this down a little bit, we're going to start making sense of if the orders are present down below. OK, so we've got this floor right here where we don't have that much liquidity down below. We've got 483 Bitcoin down at 19,502. It's coming down in towards the VWAP itself. But we've got an influx of liquidity up here where there's heavy liquidity that is looking to get orders filled if price makes its way towards that the idea is as long as these areas right here are showing commitment from traders like for example at 20,000 there's 506 Bitcoin coming into the order book itself so the principle says that we want this orange line right here to stay static we don't want it to be cancelled because it's adverts they are showing an auction saying yo we got 500 469 Bitcoin stacked at this here in this area here and we want to get that filled is the market going to reverse towards that point who's going to win the bids or the ask. When the bids are being hit, price has been smacked to the downside. We understand that as Mr. Market Maker filling his longs at lower prices. When the ask is being lifted, we know that the ask is being lifted to the point where traders are buying. Why? Because you can only sell into those who are buying. So we're going to try and make sense of that relationship right now. Let's dive into it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, then. Cool. Now. Bitcoin on the 15 minute time frame. We have now got three more minutes until the start of the actual New York session itself. Who's in the room with me today? Who's in the room with me today? Show us the hand, Steve. Is this rising wedge going to break? <laughs> okay, Casper sent you here. Yo, mad love and respect to anyone coming from any other channel, whether it's Cas um, Jason Caspers. Mad love to my guy. He's a good kid. And we've got also Jordan as well. My guy, <laughs> mad as anything with that wild thing that he does on his live streams. And to anyone else that has come from any other channel, guys, show love to those guys. Show love everywhere else, guys. It's all one family. Why? Because we're all here to try and make sense of the game and earn a buck or two okay now here we go let's start getting to the nitty gritty of price action keep an eye out on what's going on over here because you're looking for the dollar index to drop which is the dominance of the dollar that's what we want bitcoin can only go up if the dominance of the dollar drops why because bitcoin is the asset that you pick up against the dollar itself there's no point in bitcoin rising and dollarizing where's the appreciation what's the point in the value do you understand the idea is you want the value of the dollar to drop so that the value of Bitcoin can go up. We want assets against the US dollar to rise. That's the only way we're going to see it. But if the narrative of Bitcoin rejecting the 50 EMA right here, ladies and gentlemen, given that we've tested the daily open not once, but twice in this area here, if they can't break above the daily open, the narrative has been set for Bitcoin to just completely collapse for the rest of the day. Asia has been marking price down lower. We've seen them come back up into the vector recovery zones, found resistance at the daily open. Now they're trying to hold this point at yesterday's low, which sits at the 50 EMA 
Tomei on the 15 minute time frame. We're still waiting for them to complete the, tw where is it? Two minutes until the start of the futures markets. They've already put out, okay, that the CPI data is going to be bad. All right, so we're gonna probably expect a bit of a stop hunt happening in the New York session. So please be careful. Do not consider getting involved in price when the movement is happening because you may open a trade which is gonna have high leverage and you'll end up getting shaken out and where you favored a move to the upside, it actually spikes lower, you change your idea, you go short for it to only go back up again. This is the only time where you're sitting back and you're establishing what the rest of the session is going to look like. Go back in the charts, ladies and gentlemen, and understand how the Brinks box behaves in the New York session, and you're going to get a good overview of what to expect throughout the rest of the session. The New York session is infamous for its two reversals, okay? You can have price coming in here with the Brinks box down below, or it can happen at the highs. Okay, you have to take into consideration the environment that you are trading from. So is price dropping, then they do the stop hunts and then they drop to the downside. Or has price been rising? Sorry, as price has been dropping to, let me start again. If price has been dropping down here, they initiate the trap and then they move out of the zone. This would be if price was moving up. Okay, that is in principle the two reversals. One from the high down to the low for them to move away from this point to the upside. My days, this winds me up. Okay, and then from here, you've got the move from the downside to the upside to bring it back into the zone again. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Here we go. We've got some movement, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the book map up, man. The markets are now nearly open. No, they are open, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the liquidity, 20,481 Bitcoin smacking up that 20K zone itself. Will the liquidity stay present in the chart is the question. Will it stay there? Or is this just an advert to trap traders into the belief? Those guys who are looking at order flow thinking, okay, there's liquidity up there. Are we likely to see price go towards that zone? Is this the second attempt towards, sorry, the third attempt towards the daily open? Because if Bitcoin ends up trading higher today, then that's going to trigger traders to believe that Bitcoin is moving up. That's going to be enough time for the trader to come in and say, you know what, Bitcoin to the moon. Bang, it's going to move higher. They're going to recover the vector candle. Then we're probably going to see a little bit of a rejection because we are in the stop hunt zone. So don't fall for it. You have to wait for confirmation. Wait for the confirmation of the move. If they move out of the zone, retrace continuation to the upside, ladies and gentlemen. It really is that simple because human nature is that simple. That's the truth. They move with the feelings of how people are. Look, daily open, I can guarantee to you, Bitcoin gets above the daily open today, 90% of you are going to get a notification from crypto.com or Binance or any platform that you currently hold crypto on saying that Bitcoin is trading up 1% for the day. That's designed to make you do something. Uh, what is that? Because you buy when price is rising. Congratulations on being the liquidity for Mr. Market Maker to run his shorts. So please be careful. If Mr. Market Maker is going to be riding price to the upside, wait for price to pull back after he's initiated the false move up so he can trap the traders that went long in this area here and then make them pay the price, use their liquidity and their long liquidation points so that he can start running up his longs at lower prices to shift out of the zone. Biggest point in the chart that we would like to see Bitcoin return to would be the previous vector zones in the Sydney session, ladies and gentlemen. The markets are extended to the downside, a slight recovery back up would be welcomed in the markets across the board. Why? Because the CPI data is coming out tomorrow. So if they're going to drop price, they're going to move it up first. And that is the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, remember this. These live streams, as much as I do my hardest to make sure that I get the information over to you at speeds of light, and I speak too pretty fast, where you're going to have to listen pretty quick. There are three things that we guarantee in this live stream. Death, taxes, and of course, me picking up my daughter at 3 p.m. So I'm going to try and stay with you as long as I physically can, guys. And I'm hoping that the price action actually does play out the way we anticipate it in this live stream. I'm hoping that the energy is being brought to you today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking all under one breath. I have a vein thicker than my right leg, and it's sticking out of my throat. Can't actually believe what I'm doing right now. I'm speaking too fast. We're getting everything set up for the new live stream set up as well, ladies and gentlemen, trying to bring you a new way of looking at the charts. But more importantly, you get to see this mug as well. I am going to be revealing myself, so be sure to like and subscribe so you can see that. I've got a family of pattern watchers and nearly 88,000 of you that have been anticipating this, but some of you said that you don't want to see it. So you know what? Happy days, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. You know what the, the story is, guys, with this face reveal. I did actually do a face reveal. If you go back in the videos on April Fool's Day, I did reveal my face. It's just the camera wasn't working. So I fulfilled my end of the stick, guys. I don't care what any of you say. I did my end of the stick, you know? So I did reveal myself. I did. I'm sorry. The face reveal was present. I'm sorry. You can say whatever you want. It was no April Fool's. That was the agreement. Look at what Price has just done. 
Brinks box behavior, ladies and gentlemen. Stop, hunt, rise, tap that daily open, bring it back down. Engage in the sentiment. Next 11 minutes of this candlestick are going to dictate if price is going to go higher or they're just going to run price to the downside. So we've got to be very careful. We've got vector candle points right here. This will be the testing of this 50 EMA in this zone. Going into the smaller time frames itself, are they actually engaging in that idea? Here it is. This is very important. If this is a vector candle, here we go. Red vector candle right here. 56 seconds until this candlestick actually finalizes and it's going to reveal to us exactly Exactly what the intention is. Look at how aggressive they're getting right here. The Brinks is being finalized for um, three, four minutes into the New York session itself, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Coming down into the VWAP, by the way, guys, for the book map, guys, this is the VWAP on the last 72 hours. So it's a solid indication of support, not the last um, three hours, but it's the last 72 hours of book map. So this is a good area of support if Bitcoin can hold this. 28 seconds until the, ve the red vector candle is going to show the proof of this move, ladies and gentlemen. The stop punt rise could be indicating that Bitcoin is going to be going down lower, ladies and gentlemen. We need to have a look at other assets across the board. Dollar yen is still dropping down. Oil still pulling back. S&P trading positively. So we're just waiting to see if they're going to do the trap. Will it break the VWAP itself? Liquidity is coming into the upside, but it has been cancelled. That 20,000 is still present, though. But the liquidity has been tapered off a little bit. So we're going to wait and see. One second. Here we go. Vector recovery. Is it going to come into play? Here we go. Red vector candle. Is it going to recover it? Come back up into the wick. There's your trap, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it goes back up just to under help you understand the idea of the trap, ladies and gentlemen. That would be a beautiful setup. Stop and rise, drop, continuation to the upside. They triggered that daily open. They know they got liquidity up there. Look what how many orders got filled there. 754 Bitcoin at the highest point. What does that tell you? Traders buy at the highest point. You've been programmed to believe that you need to buy when price is rising. That is wrong. You do not buy when price is rising. You don't go and buy something for you to go and sell it at a lower price. You buy something at the lowest price for you to go and sell it at the highest price. So what do you do? You buy the way the market maker buys. You buy when it is counterintuitively correct to do. You do it when, you're, when it's dropping because you buy at the lowest point. You don't go out and say, I want to buy a house. I want to pay the highest price. No, it doesn't. You, you don't. You want to pay the lowest price possible. That's how it works. So the concepts of economics in everyday use, like coffee, like... Um, Cars, houses, clothes. Why is it any different in this game, ladies and gentlemen? Because you are programmed to believe that when it's rising, it means the bulls are in control, but the bear stands up before it attacks. The bull bows down before it attacks. That's the truth of it all, guys. Simple psychology. It's understanding human nature. Bitcoin will move up. Market Maker will provide that facility. He's already been building his longs at lower prices. He has to bring it back into the fray. He has to make people realize that they can make money from this game. But it's the psychology of the trader that's going to make him lose in this game because he doesn't pay himself. So anyone running shorts right now in Bitcoin, you might have a bit of a problem if Bitcoin does break higher above the daily open. People are putting it out on crypto Twitter, left, right and center. Bitcoin has to go here. Bitcoin has to go there. It's irrelevant. Right now, Bitcoin's 19,916 and that is the value of Bitcoin. Doesn't matter what it's going to be in the future. We trade what we see, not what we want to see. We look at the zones in the chart where market makers are going to trigger traders to do something. Back at this point right here at 20,000 itself, that's the point where they sold off from. So principal would say if he's going to move price up towards that zone, he's going to trigger an influx of sellers and he's going to trigger an influx of buyers. Is it going to fit in line with Mr. Market Maker's narrative? Happy days, ladies and gentlemen, if that's the case. Yeah? What time is it? Where are we at? 25 to, two, 25 to 3, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be going in on the final 15 minutes of the New York session. It's, um, sorry, the actual f last 15 minutes before I have to go and get my daughter. So let's calm it down. Let me bring the fire to you right now. Wait until 3 p.m. There are no news announcements coming out today. All they're doing is just talking about the idea of the CPI coming out tomorrow. So that means with no news announcements today, the market is free to trend. OK, there's nothing that's going to influence it. We know recessions here. We know inflation's a problem. We know the euro's close to parity. We know the dollar strength is present. We know Russia's cut off the supply and they won't be putting it back on until the 21st of July. But that's going to be a problem because they don't even think they're going to switch it back on. And that's going to affect the euro, given that is the largest gas supply for the eurozone itself. More importantly, ladies and gentlemen, 3 p.m. is when the markets get wind of all the news that has come out overnight, ladies and gentlemen. And there is that move right there for Bitcoin coming up towards that 20,550 Bitcoin. Is it gonna... Ah, it didn't take it. It didn't take it. Cancelled. That was a spoof. That was a spoof order right there, ladies and gentlemen. They did not take that liquidity. They did not take it. How many liquidity? 378. No, they didn't take that liquidity. That was a spoof right there. They cancelled it off right there. Now it's coming back in again. 434 Bitcoin. Keep an eye out on that. 
This right now is trigger traders to go long on this. Look, look how it appears and disappears. You want to pay attention to the darker colors, not the blue, not the yellow. The blue and the yellow imply that there's lots of traders coming in and placing orders, which is making up the 339 Bitcoin as such. But up here, you've got 510 Bitcoin in that zone, which is made up of fewer traders with bigger orders. OK, that's where the journey of liquidity is. Notice how they keep probing, testing, smacking that area there like tap, pull back, tap, pull back, spike, bring it down. OK, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the relationship of Mr. Market Makers move problem we got right now, guys. This is a blue vector candle in this zone. And we know what blue vector means. We know that it can easily come back and recover that. So the strength of this next candle would need to just come down, consolidate ever so slightly and then break out higher to the upside, ladies and gentlemen. That is what you want to see with this candle. But 3 p.m. is the magic hour. Why? Because the market would have absorbed all the price action. They would have absorbed all the news and then they will start to get to trading. OK, so please, if you're not confident with what you're doing right now, whilst this is all happening, where you're getting shaken out to the upside, to the downside, wait till 3 p.m. because then the markets would have fully absorbed everything. And then we can get back into the trading game of the New York session. More importantly, coming towards the close of the UK session, which is 5 p.m. UK time, which will be very short. If you go to News um, Forex Factory, you go to the markets tab up here and it will say to you that the UK session will be closing in two hours and 20 minutes, which is 5 p.m. UK time. All right. The New York session will be closing in seven hours and 19 minutes, which is 10 p.m. my time. OK, UK time. When London comes to close, keep an eye out on the charts, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because there's always a little bit of a relief rally, depending on what New York has done. So if New York marks price up higher towards the highs of, say, for example, they come up towards 20,250 and it comes to about half past four in the UK, then in London, London will look to try and take some profits and we could see a little bit of a retrace in the zone which then once UK is closed, the US then has free rems to do whatever it wants, which is roughly around about lunchtime for the US. And then the traders in the US will come back to the charts and see where they can move price because they will have free rem for the market, which then leads me on to the next thing, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be doing a live tonight, so make sure you check in to understand what had happened today. But listen, if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe, okay? so that you can enjoy this madness, calming it down right now, ladies and gentlemen. The fire has been brought to you today. I haven't stopped talking. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will check in with you all later on tonight. If you haven't done so already, download these indicators. They are free of charge. You can go and pick them up from the Traders Reality website where you can do it takes you straight back to TradingView. And you want to participate in any of the masterclasses and get in with the conversation of the traders in the actual Patreon itself, make your way over there so you can dive into 67 masterclasses and understand the hybrid system just that little bit more. Pinned to the top of the chat is the access for everything. Pattern watchers, your boys out. Take care of yourselves, family. Peace.